Hello fighting fans around the world, we are at the World Valetudo Championships from Recife, Brazil. My name is Bess Boone and next to me is David Bayuth. Are you ready Dave? I'm ready for a great evening here in uh, Brazil. It's nice and warm and uh, should be some hot action. Well, it's uh, Frederico La Pena who puts on uh, World Valetudo Championships number 7. Uh, this is a very interesting super fight in this uh, in this fight uh, between uh, Edson Carvalho, the one who sent uh, Walid Ismail to the intensive care after one of the most bloodiest street fights of the city of Rio de Janeiro, against Igor Ice Cold Fog Chanchin, the Russian unstoppable machine who's just winning fights after fight after fight. Yeah, Igor is incredible. He's the first fighter in the history of the NHB to unify all five belts. Uh, the WVC from Brazil, AFC from Russia, IFC from the Ukraine, the RNF from St. Petersburg, and Pride from Japan. Yeah, this man is, is, is a story. I mean, he's, he is really unbelievable uh, as a kickboxer to achieve so much in no holds bad fighting. 32 victories, one controversial defeat is the record now on April 99. Five eight-man tournaments the one and many super fights. He is just an ongoing living legend. Well, so it's going to be promising a very exciting night with this uh, Igor fight against this uh, Cavallo. Uh, we're now at the introduction of the fighters. Uh, we're here in Recife, Brazil. It's a nice, it's one of the third biggest, here's the loss, by the way, of the octagon. There's no biting, no eye gouging, no fence holding and a 30 minute time limit. We're in Recife, Brazil. It is um, uh, one of the third biggest cities from Brazil. It's near the beach, it's very nice, it's pretty. Um, you have Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo and it's like somewhere in between. Uh, it's near the coast and uh, it's promising now, that's the third time uh, the event takes place here and the people are just very excited to, to, see, uh, to see fights here on Recife. Yeah. And uh, here we go, ready for the fighters introduction. This should be a very exciting night of uh, no holes barred, uh, real no holes barred. Most uh, places in, in the world uh, don't allow it anymore. And um, in America, uh, popularity fell off when uh, additional rules came into play and uh, it just wasn't the real thing anymore. So, but tonight we've got the real deal. It's no holes barred and uh, we're getting ready for the action. Now. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same story everywhere. It's politicians, it's, it's, it's boxing uh, organizations who are against it. It just had a, here's the ways of winning by knockout, tapping out, corner throw, towel of referee intervention. It's, it's, it's the similar roles of, uh, of, of these typically no hold barred events held in Russia or in, uh, in Brazil. There's an upcoming one uh, in Aruba, it's an island in, uh, from the Dutch Antilles uh, where they're going to promote uh, a cage fight there. It's, uh, it's going to be the World Valetudo Championship number, uh, number 8. Well, as we look as in the cage, we can see the fighters are all mentally and uh, physical uh, ready for, uh, for the fights coming up this night. It's going to be very exciting, some of the fighters have to fight three times on an evening and it's going to be a very, very big endurance for everybody to fight here, especially because it's 37 degrees Celsius here in Recife, Brazil. That's for sure, uh, boss. It, it will definitely be a test of endurance because um, not only will, will all the fighters have to deal with the heat, but then uh, when uh, they win their initial bouts, they'll have to come back and defend it again. So. There, there, there's, there's, there's a good side on, uh, on the heat as well. It's, uh, you don't need to warm up yourself so much, Dave, when you uh, step into this case. Only the way of walking up to the entrance already will make you very limber and, uh, and warmed up. And uh, it's, it's, it's very, people get sweaty very much, so it's very difficult to, to put an arm lock or a leg lock to, to an opponent because of they're sweating so much. I think because of this sweating, we will see a lot of fights with a lot of punches and kicking. Don't you think so, Dave? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Here's the quarterfinals, oh, by the right. way. Uh, yes, boss, as you just mentioned, um, you know, these fighters will be sweaty tonight. And um, many times before, we've both seen that uh, holds and chokes uh, just can't be completed because uh, they just become so slippery. Uh, both fighters become so slippery. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight. Uh, I would expect that if uh, any of the fighters take a strategy 
going away from holds and more of uh, just being phys having physical contact, they may have an advantage with uh, their fight. Yeah, I think that the, the, the one who has a real good stamina and conditioning with punching and kicking uh, are, in, are in favor when it's really hot like, like this. We can see in Holland that, uh, and that's one of the reasons why Mel Holtzberg doesn't you know, use the balsam and oil because of problems with, with getting that in your eye or uh, like the tile oil when they warm up. You know, the fighters take that and then they, you know, it's very hot and when you get it in your eye, it's burning. That's one of the, one of the reasons. And the, and the second reason is, of course, when you use Vaseline all over your body, it's very hard for, for, a, for a grappler to, to, to finish you in, in a choke. So this is one of the, one of the things in, in, uh, in Brazil that makes it also very attractive because the fight will just go on longer and there is more kicking and punching. That's right. So... Um you're right, it will be a test of endurance. So it's time to find out as the um, uh, introduction is out of the way and we're ready to start the fights. So here we go with our first fight this evening. It's going to be very interesting because it's, it's Russia against Brazil. Russian are tough, they're, they, you know, they don't want to give up, they don't know the word tap out, they, they just, they're just going. They train. They have. They have nothing to live for as as this type of fighting. And I think the first fight is going to be interesting. It's Asulio against Mikael Avetisan. Avetisan is the f only fighter who uh, who made it uh, 33 minutes with uh, with Igor Fofjanshin, the other Russian fighter in Israel, uh, and lost on a point decision. But we start with uh, with the Brazilian Asulio, uh, who's entering the arena right now. Azulio is very well known in Brazil. Um, I think this evening he may have an advantage because he's used to training with uh, this 37 degrees of heat. And uh, they, of course, all the Brazilian fighters uh, have a very unique style that maybe the Russians aren't used to. So, you know, uh, boss, we he should looks, see he something. He looks big for a Brazilian, bigger. Dave, does, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. He's, he's very big for a Brazilian. Very muscular and well, well trained. So this should be a very interesting fight. Well, what I've noticed is that he taped taped his hands. Not many Brazilians do this. Um, now we're waiting for uh, for Mikael, the Russian uh, fighter, to enter the arena. This is, is going to be a war because you know I've seen this Mikael in action, Dave, and he is uh, he's the coming man in uh, in no holds bad fighting, I think. Uh, maybe with the taped hands, he's going to be uh, hitting more instead of uh, grabbing because. Uh, you know, with the uh, taped hands, it may be a little harder to do a lot of the holds and chokes, but uh, it's, it's great for punching and uh, making contact, so. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I think it's more dangerous by wrapping the hands, but uh, I think the, the knuckles are still free, as I can see it correctly. So we're waiting now for, for Mikael, who, uh, who I fought, he fought a real war against Uller in, uh, in Israel in the Absolute Fighting Championships number three. Just an incredible 33-minute war these both fighters put on there, and so we, I'm, I'm, expecting, uh, I'm expecting a lot from this fight coming up now. Azulio is having to wait here for a little while and sometimes uh, can make a fighter a bit nervous waiting because he's got to think about what he's, he's going to do and uh, he's got some time and just uh, standing and pacing in the ring. So um, what do you think, boss? Yeah, it is. You know, sometimes the favorite fighter wants to come up last uh, for the audience uh, to, to just keep the, the, the tension in the audience and keep the excitement there. Sometimes it can be an advantage, sometimes it can be a disadvantage. It's just, you know, he's just, I think he's relaxed, you know, he just walks around and, you know, he'll st he just wants to fight. Well, hopefully for Azulio, um, just uh, standing there and pacing around, he doesn't cool off too, uh, too much and uh, face an early knockout, so. Yeah, that will be the day a fighter only drops from the heat before even a punch is thrown. But here we are, here we are, we are, Mikael. And the plane has landed, you know, the Russian arrived. He comes in and enters the arena, and they close the door immediately. So they're up, they're up to the fight right now. He looks, he looks physical, you know, very, very well prepared, the Russian. Don't you think so, uh, Dave? Absolutely. What, uh, what's he wearing on his hands? Are they small gloves? 
He has small gloves. Um, he likes to wear them. I think t- just for the protection. Last time he fought a, the f- a cage fight four tournament, he fought against Bob Scriber, and I think he hurt his hand a lot. And the officials just checking to make sure that uh, he doesn't. Uh, he's been taped properly, and his his uh, gloves are okay. And we're we're ready to start here. So both fighters are coming together. No. He looks mean, Dave. This guy look. <laughs> <laughs> and so does so does Azulio. I think it's ready to. Yeah, they go. They start. Uh, referee's giving the last rules here, and here we go. I think the Russian wants to go to the ground as quick as possible. You know, his, his, his style is wrestling. You know, I don't, he doesn't like to throw punches. I saw that against the fight against Schreiber. But uh, we'll see what the Brazilian does. I don't know his, his kicking okay. and punching techniques. He stands uh, uh, like oh, a so. Here we go. I told you he, he wanted to go for the takedown straight away, the, 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 the Russian fighter. He just wants to fight on the ground. I don't think he likes it to, to fight standing up. Yeah, as I told you, Dave, look, there's the takedown. Well, they're in close and not a lot's happening yet, but a few head punches, but... Uh, I think he's in a side mount position. Now he's in, now he's in a... Now he's in a oh, that's a nasty, uh, nasty headbutt from, from Azulio. Yeah, he definitely looks like he's got the advantage on Azulio, so... Uh, boss, what, what does a, f- a fighter like Azulio has to do to get out of a position like this? Well, it's very, as you can see, uh, the, the Mikael is just working with these terrible headbutts, and and so for him, it's it, the only way is, is a reversal. He has to turn, he has to turn his opponent by putting his feet in his hip, as you can see that, and then just try to roll him over and try to get the mount position. Oh yeah, there, there, there he goes. There he goes. Now he's on top, and let's see what uh, kind of attack move he can make. And he's got a few headbutts himself. But I think he, he would rather uh, stand and fight uh, fist to fist, and I don't, I'm, it doesn't really look like this is his style of fighting. It might be not by <laughs> his style of fighting, but look, I mean, they, give, they both give headbutts, and somebody starts to bleed soon, uh, Dave. You cannot give headbutts like this without, you know, being cutting somebody. Yeah, and Azilio is really built well, so I think he can hold his own in a wrestling position. And here you get a good shot of his uh, uh, really big arm, so. Yeah. I think this is also a period where you have to to take your, your breath and you have to recoup from, from the first takedowns and the first actions you made. You see the Brazilians very, you know, quiet he takes his rest he he, hears, he looks at his corner man he, and now and then when they recoup you can see they try to, to try to get the position here's an elbow there's another elbow he's in a good position this this brazilian fighter look yeah absolutely i, I don't think this is what uh, Mikel expected and oh left after left into the body and those have to hurt and that will really uh, wear down a fighter so Yeah, I think this is this is a, a, a toll for the for the Russian fighter, this uh, this Mikael, to take to take the, this type of punishment. Uh, oh, a nasty, yeah. nasty elbow to the face of the of the Russian fighter. This this Asilio is, and he's taking the shots. You know, it's not that he, he just really puts power in it. He waits he, he waits till he have the right position. Then look look, yeah, he right. makes the headbutt when he when he knows he can make them, and he just you know it's all with full force. He looks very strong. This is this is going to have its toll, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, it looks like Mikel uh, cannot break out of this position that he's in, and and he's just taking a beating. So uh, he's going to have to turn around pretty quick if he wants a chance in this fight. Well, I'm kind of you know I'm surprised that this guy fought 33 minutes with Fofchanship. So 
he he has to i think you have to stop this guy by knocking him out or, or the doctor has to has to go interfere in the fight it this guy won't give up uh, dave Oh, here he goes. He's trying to turn out of it. Yeah, I think he's going to do it. He's got he's got the leg. I think it's nasty. Look at the oh, a nasty elbow again to the face. It's it's the tape has gone loose of the uh, of, of the Brazilian fighter. He had a he, he for a second he had him in a choke with his elbow. So, you know, the Brazilian definitely knows several techniques besides um, just contact boxing. Just for the viewers who are, who are watching right now, we have uh, Achilio, a Brazilian heavyweight uh, fighter on top. Uh, on the back, it's Mikael Alivician from, uh, from, from Russia. And uh, it is a nasty fight. I mean, the, the, he is just having the best position, the Brazilian, and he keeps on punishing the Russian fighter. I'm amazed that, that we don't have blood in this fight yet because we've had a lot of contact, a lot of uh, headbutts, and that's you know really bone on bone, and, and it doesn't take much to break open the skin and, and have blood uh, spurting out everywhere. But we haven't seen that yet, but I would almost uh, certainly think that that will be coming in this fight. I see a little cut on the eye of uh, of uh, the Russian uh, Mikhail, but uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not real bad. Oh, again, a terrible headbutt and a punch of, of, of the Brazilian fighter. That that hurts. Look, you can see it in, in his arms. That really hurt. Yeah. The Russian's trying to fight back. I mean, he is one tough cookie. I mean, he's he's really endured a lot of uh, big pun uh, punishing blows here, and he's still fighting back. So I wouldn't give up on Mikel just yet. Is that a choke, Dave? It looks like uh, an arm lock, and I'm not sure what he was trying to do with the arm lock. He gives another headbutt. Well, we're about five minutes in the fight, uh, Dave, and uh, it's still powerful. Yeah, <laughs> they absolutely. are not tired. Absolutely. One thing about a fight like this, I mean, it's great for us watching on, on uh, television, but it's a difficult fight for the viewers there because they can't see, you know, what you're seeing on the screen. And, um, you know, it's, it's too bad for them, but we do have a close-up look, and we can see all the punishment. Oh, terrible oh. headbutt again. <laughs> you saw the referee uh, making loose the, uh, one of the, 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 the tape, and we saw a move here now by Mikael going to the fence and holding the fence, which is forbidden, just to maybe get a better position and turn out of this, this, this back position. The Brazilian keeps on the mouth strongly, and it's, you know, it, he has to take the, the stronger punishment. Yeah, and he hasn't found a way to break out of this. It uh, doesn't appear that he has the strength to break away from uh, Zulio. So it's going to take uh, some other tactic for him to get out. I think this position is worse, Dave. I mean, look, he's, he's now with the back of the head to the fence. You know, Shilly's still in the mount. He, w he won't give up this position. I think, don't you think it's more di more difficult to turn to turn your opponent right now? Oh, absolutely. I think he, he must be tired from all those blows and you know, probably a little bit dizzy as well. It's a, it's a strong defense, though, the Russian have, you know. It's just to, to lie on your back for five, six minutes, take this punishment, and then just try to hold your opponent as close as possible or in a position where he can't hurt you too much. Up to this point, it's really hard to tell if Mikhail is hurt or, um, you know, or not. You know, he's, he's taken lots of punishment. And there, oh, devastating elbow. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, it's amazing that there is, that there's still not, not, not really like a big cut. On uh, on Mikael, you know, he took some blows, he took some punishment, he took some elbows, headbutts, and, and you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and you definitely can see that he's a well-conditioned athlete because uh, I mean he's still taking it, and you know I wouldn't count him out of this fight yet. Oh, I see a heavy, heavy, nasty cut. Somebody is cut nasty. Look, there is a, I th and I think it's the Brazilian. I think it's the Brazilian. 
now the fighters are free. The referee's stopping. Oh my God, down. it's the Brazilian who has the cut. How did he get that cut? Wow, I think it was on a headbutt. Oh, you can bet Mikal is uh, very glad to be out of that position. <laughs> I thought he did something, man, but I mean, be because, you know, that headbutt came. Look, the doctor says he can't fight anymore. This is impossible. Oh, he had, to, he, had to, he had the best position, and he has to quit this fight. That wasn't... I told you, it, it had, to, it had to, to go this way. You know, they, 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 those headbutts and those, uh, those elbows are just devastating. It's a shame a fight has to end like this, uh, Dave. Don't you think so? Oh, absolutely. Especially for Azulu, who looked like he really, really had that fight. Um, he was he had the position for most of it, and he threw most of the punches, most of the headshots, uh, headbutts, and it came down to this. But that's how the fight uh, business works. So. Yeah. Well. It's, uh, I don't think Mikael likes it to uh, to win uh, to win a fight like this. He's a he's a very sportive fighter, but uh, we can see the cut is just too big, and uh, he doesn't like it when he's really he really he really is very disappointed in. Uh, but you can see it's the cut is too deep. If blood is coming into his eyes, then then you just simply can't defend yourself anymore. So winner Mikael, his advances. We will see him in the next fight against. Douglas Silva or Kaukas, depending on who's doing the next fight. Well, we'll see if the, the damage he took in this fight will carry on uh, to the next fight or if, he, if he's in pretty good shape. I'm going to ask you here for our friend, Mikael. How is he fighting in the sun, this cold of Recife, coming from Siberia, 40 degrees above the zero? How is it uh, coming from Siberia? A place which is uh, 40 degrees below and coming to Recife where it's hot as hell. Uh, no, no difference uh, in which place uh, fighting. In Brazil and Siberia, no, it doesn't matter. Pois ele falou que não há diferença. Luta, luta. Well, it's Douglas Silva against Kaukas Sutarim from Russia. It's a freestyle against a Muay Thai uh, style. So it's going to be interesting again, uh, Dave. It'll be interesting to see if this has any similarities to the first fight. Uh, once again, we've got a Russian going up against a Brazilian. So. Well, it is. <laughs> It's kind of interesting, Mikael saying in his little interview he did. The guy asked him, <laughs> the guy asked him, because it's so cold in Siberia, now fighting over here, what, if, if there's a difference. And he was very, he was very clear about it. You know, his answer was, well, <laughs> the fight is the same if I fight in Siberia or here. It's the same fight. It's the same blood. It's the same pain. Well, I can imagine that Siberia would uh, toughen up just about anybody. Yeah, I think, and when it's a freezing cold, it's <laughs> like, a, like a very hot. Okay, here we see the, the, the Brazilian fighter coming in. Douglas Zilfa. And again, it's a big Brazilian, uh, Dave. Absolutely, he looks a lot like uh, the last fighter, um, Asulio. You think they brought us? <laughs> I don't want to get into that, but... They got a very different name, so they're, they're definitely not. Well, we're waiting for uh, for Kaukas Su Suman Gomendov. We just call the guy Kaukas. Neither one of us speak Russian, so. Oh, this is a determined face. Look, look at the Russian. Uh, He's not sweating. I, I wonder if he warmed up before this fight or if he's just going to step up there cold and uh, see how fast he can get warm. And he's in the ring now. I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, never saw, I never saw Kaukas, the Russian fighter, uh, fight before. 
uh, he's a Muay Thai fighter. That's what it says. So I'm, I'm gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how many ground fighting skills the Russian guy has. Well, we'll see here in just a minute. Up we go, Dave. Beginning of the fight. The Brazilian really has large uh, arms and upper body strength, but uh, the Russian looks like he's it's got a very overdeveloped chest. So here we go with the uh, fight. Yeah, I think the Brazilian is going is to go for a takedown very quick. Uh, at least that's what I make make of the, the position he's fighting in. The Russian just waiting to throw a good punch or a kick. And these fighters are bare-fisted this time. So. I think it's for the fighter to choose if they if they have wear little gloves, a uh, little protection, or, uh, or or not at all, uh, Dave. Yeah. Well, I think uh, of course if they have uh, contact with their fists, there's more chance of blood and also injury in their hands. So. Nice leg kick by uh, by Kaukas. I think the Brazilians became more careful with takedowns after they saw for Chanchin, you know, here we go. After they saw for, for Chanchin, you know, destroying opponents by, you know, when, when they try to take down by diving to the legs. And then just immediately the knee followed and some heavy knockdowns were, uh, were following by uh, some Brazilians. And I think they learned from that. So they're more careful now in, in, in making that type of takedown. We're still early in the fight, and neither one of uh, these fighters have really cra cracked a sweat. And now would be the time to go, you know, move in for a takedown because uh, your opponent's not going to be too slick. So, uh, uh, beginning of the fight would be a good time to go right in and, and bring your opponent down. But they look like they're boxers at the moment, and neither one is really. Yeah, good low kick from, from the Russian Kaukas guy. And, and, and he doesn't check it. I mean, he doesn't block the low kick, the Brazilian. So you, you know, if, if you can have kicks like that for the coming few minutes on the same spot, it's, it's going to hurt. Oh, great, great, great left hook. You, I think he's hurt. Do you, you think so, Dave? Look, look, look. Yeah, he's, he's going backwards. So. Oh, yeah, he, he's hurt. He is not secure of himself to do this takedown. Yeah. You can see there is fear in the eyes of the Brazilian. Yeah, he, he wants to go in for takedown. He doesn't want to box him, but uh, so far his attempts haven't worked. So he's going to have to get in and, and get around the body and bring him down to the ground to make it his kind of fight. You know? It's quite funny, you know, the, the, they used to have a supremacy in, in this type of fighting, the Brazilians, but you really can see now, especially from the Russia, Asian countries, but also from, from Europe, people start learning about ground fighting and kick and punching is back, Dave. It was an inside low kick uh, from Kaukas again, and he's, he's simply the more aggressive fighter right now. Yeah, both fighters have been you know, a little slow to get off here. They've uh, had a long period to check each other out, and uh, I just I suspect any minute it's going to break out in a diff probably a different kind of fight. So. Well, the Russian is taking the good to the, the middle of the cage, and, and it's just you know doing what he what he does best, and it's kicking and punching. Okay, now the referee is, is breaking the fight up and, they, and he's, the, he's, he's saying you have to fight, it's necessary you fight, both, both you should fight. You can see that when the Russian is throwing a punch, oh, oh great left hook, oh he taps off, he taps off, look, look, look. 
He must have hurt him with that left hook. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that Silver really needed to go in and, and go for a takedown because this was not his type of fight. He, he uh, was completely disoriented, uh, trying to box, and he really needed to get in there and go for the takedown. But Amazing when Brazilians stepping out from punching. I mean, you know, where, where, does the, where is the sport going to? And this is really getting interesting. And, and what's interesting to note is Kakas will really have an advantage going into his next fight because he, he really didn't suffer any type of uh, injury in that fight and didn't have to uh, put that much effort into it. So it'll be interesting to see how he does in his next fight. Yeah, the thing is it's going to be two Russians against each other. Well, Dave, it's two Russians in the half final. It's Mikhail against Kaukas. Uh, so we have one Russian in the final already. That'll be an interesting fight too. Uh, especially, we'll, it'll be um, interesting to note if Mikhail uh, suffered much damage uh, because we know that Kakas really wasn't hit with any major blows in his fight and, and had to put in very little energy to win. So that'll be interesting. But I still think Mikhail is the more experienced fighter, so it all depends on if he can take the ground. Well, we saw Andre Turo uh, going to the going to the, the cage, and uh, we were waiting for uh, Maxim. Tarasov. Tarasov is a well-known fighter in the Norwich, but uh, fighting industry. Here he is. He, uh, he was at the absolute fighting championships all the way in the beginning. He fought Marias. He, uh, he has, he's been in, in, in Israel. He's a very experienced Norwich bad fighter. He obviously, he's from judo, but he also controls a punch. He's very determined. He won the cage fight tournament number four uh, in the finals against uh, Van der Burg. So. We will see. I mean, I think he's one of the favorites uh, for this tournament, Dave. Oh, he is. Both of these fighters look a little bit smaller than the other four fighters that we've seen up to this point, and uh, it'll, be in, it'll be interesting to see if uh, weight plays a factor in, in a fight like you know, what we're going to see this evening. So. I'm wondering if, if these Russians understand this little English that the guy speak on. Does he speak Russian? What do you think, Dave? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I don't think any fighter uh, pays too close attention to those uh, last uh, words because they're they're busy uh, getting geared up for their fight. So here we go. I think he's oh <laughs> big big low kick and 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 a quick start. You can see the experience of Tarasov. He's trying to do a guillotine choke. He is very. He has a very, very good grip, uh, Dave. We, you will see it in future future fights. The Brazilian is trying to do a takedown. Although he's, he's tall and, and not so muscular, he's very hard to, to get to the ground. Eh? He's a skilled fighter. You see, he doesn't want to go to the ground. Well, a lot of that goes in with the, the stance he's carrying, and, and uh, when necessary, he'll widen his stance and uh, plant himself well on the ground. Very hard to take a fighter like that down. You see, Tarasov had to lose the grip because the guy was punching his ribs. Okay, there's 
understand why he went to the ground, you know. I think maybe he thought the grip was so good he had that, you know, he, went to fall, he fell backwards. Well, I think he lost his advantage, that's, that's for sure. Well, you never know, Dave. Some people just light the fight from their back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we saw the, fa the Fabio Pacholek fight, you know. I mean, you know, Pacholek was in the mouth, but, but just Fabio was dominating the fight. And we saw him fight like uh, like 30 minutes that way. Oh, good head back. And again, I, I, I'm going to be... If this goes on like this, uh, Dave, there has to be... We're getting blood in this fight. <laughs> It's an aggressive fighter, the Brazilian. You, you could see it straight away when the fight started. He went there, he kicked him, he tried to do the takedown immediately. Oh, good reversal by, by Tarasov. I told you, he's an experienced ground fighter. He's very experienced, uh, Tarasov, in the old bar fighting. Yeah. He looked like he was just waiting for the right moment to uh, make his move. And, and now he's in position to do... Uh, and there we see his head butts, and he's pulling uh, Toro's head into his. A lot of uh, fighters don't have the experience to do something like that. They, um, you know, would, wouldn't attempt something like that. So. was a good right blow from Tarasov. Oh, oh left good, hand. great, left, rights, left, rights are hitting. They're all hitting the face. He, I, I, it's amazing what he can take, the guy, uh, Dave. Yeah, what is he doing? Is, it, is that a side mount? What, what is he? What kind of position? What is he doing, Dave? I don't think he's really doing much of anything. There he is turning out of the mood, though. Oh, but, uh, he gives his back, man. I mean, Brazilians never give their back. Now it's just a matter of choking him. Here we go. Here, Here we go, go, Dave. No, he cannot. He can't win this, this fight. This he's going to tap off. There it is. Oh, what a brilliant move by the Russian. What a great, great and nice victory by the guy. Turo was in trouble. The second he turned his back, that, that was really the fight. And you saw for just a moment, he um, had his arm up to try to protect his neck from the choke move. But the second that moved away, uh, Tarasov moved in. So one mistake, and that's all it takes against Tarasov. Well, there's this one Russian who still can, there's one, there's one Brazilian, Demonia Negro, who still can, you know, have the heartbeats going on from the Brazilian audience because, you know, there's one more fight, Makmot against Demonia Negro. And, you know, we have another Russian going to the half finals. Uh, it's going to be a Russian war there in Brazil, uh, Dave. Well, I don't know if the crowd um, is appreciating these fights because uh, many Brazilian fighters have advanced. So. Well, I think Asilo did a good job. Are they going to fight among themselves for real? Yeah, if uh, the Russians are going to fight between themselves with each other. Okay, uh, uh, this is, uh, will be a uh, real fight. Because uh, uh, all the fighters training in uh, different gym uh, can live in uh, different cities. Perfect, thank you very much. He says that the fight will be a real fight with different different arts and different I think Asilio did a good job uh, as a Brazilian. I mean, he, you know, he was a nasty, nasty way of losing for, uh, for Asilio against Mikael. But uh, we have one more fight to go, and that, then we have like uh, Tasarov against the Russian or Demonio. Uh, it would be it would be funny when when Demonio Negro is losing that fight as well, because you know then there's like four Russians. Uh, Four Russians in the final, so it's like a Russian finalist. 
I think that says something to uh, as to as, uh, what you mentioned earlier, and that um, the uh, fighters that are non-Brazilian <coughs> have learned a lot of the techniques that the Brazilians have uh, used in the past, and always uh, did very well with it. So. Um, It'll be interesting to see this last fight um, if, if one of the uh, Brazilians can advance on. I think it's a matter of skills and endurance, but especially people who are, who are very involved in kick and punching and also have a background in sambo or judo. You, you can see they study ground fighting now as well, so it's, it's, it's getting more and more interesting every time. Yeah. And, and all these directions are oh, very tough. Oh, yes, the Brazilian. He was uh, Demonio Negro. He's a popular fighter. He's, he's, this is going to be an interesting fight, Dave. Well, the weight falls on his shoulders tonight because he's the last Brazilian that we will see unless he can uh, advance on to the uh, semifinals. Yeah, and the guy he is fighting, and I, God, I hope I can pronounce this name, it's Magomed Mirzamogomedov. We we'll just call him Magomed. Yeah, that sounds fine to me. And again, a big, big, big Brazilian. Uh, have you uh, seen Magomed fight before, boss? No, I've been in Russia a couple of times, and uh, in Russia I didn't see him fight before. I know he has a he has a little bit of. Uh, Experience in all of bad fighting. Here we go. Look. He looks a little bit like Kaukas, you know, yeah, the fighting was going to say that as well. Maybe they're brothers. Time for the truth. That's the title of this of this World Valentino Championships number number seven. And it looks like the truth is in Russia, Dave. Well, so far it is. This 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 will be an interesting fight. Uh, Negro has a uh, twenty pound advantage over uh, Magomed, and to this point, um, most of the fighters have been fairly equal in weight. And you can see that uh, most of that weight is in his upper body. He also appears to have very strong legs and a slight height advantage. Again, it's a big, big, big Brazilian. Uh, they, they start eating more iron, I think, in, uh, in Brazil as well. <laughs> they look. Here we go. It's interesting to see how the, the Brazilians also try to take the initiative by kicking, uh, Dave. And you can see by his stance, he's, uh, he's prepared to kick a little bit more, I think, than uh, Magomed. Magomed appears like he wants to come in and, and grab or fist, or do some fist work, and there you see what he start off with is the fist work, so. Well, this, this Magomed guy is in the, in the, the purple, purple red chunk. It's from Russia, and in the black trunk we have Demonio Negro from Brazil. I don't think it's too hard for our fans to figure out who the Brazilian is in this fight, do you? Well, maybe he had a suntan, or maybe he's from America, you never know. Uh, <laughs> they're talking, look, they say, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> that doesn't hurt, look, they're talking. They're really into the fight, Dave. Both of these starters come from a uh, boxing background, is that right, boss? So, well, as they as they move and how they defend. Oh, good left hook! You could see, look, look, look! You could see the Brazilian. You know, he, 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 he duck a little bit and then throwing the left hook was a perfectly, perfectly boxing technique. And 
every time there are blows, you can see the Brazilian like, come on, come on, come on. That's, that doesn't hurt me. Yeah, it seems to fire him on. Ooh, if that red, <laughs> right hand would have landed, then we would have a knockout. Yeah, this may, this may be a very quick fight. <laughs> it could be decided that with just one punch. And again, it's a good counter from the Brazilian, you know, He's, he goes, he leans backward when the punch is landing and, you know, counters directly with the right, the right punch. Yeah. Magomed's a, a, a good puncher, though. He uh, compresses his punches. He's, he's a little bit more uh, compact with his punches. And uh, Negro goes a little bit uh, wider with his punches. It takes longer. And for, uh, when you do that on a quick fighter, he can duck and get out of the way of those punches. So, and that's worked to... That's good, good, good so front far. kick from the Russian, and you can see when it when it hits, you know, when it lands, the Brazilian is going for me. It doesn't hurt me, you know. Come on, come on, is that all you have? It, it really appears that neither fighter is interested in grabbing and, and trying to take down, which uh, could be could be to Negro's advantage with his uh, he's, he's a heavier fighter and, and he has uh, it's clear he has very good upper body strength. Yeah, depending on his determination and, and also his, his conditioning, you know, sometimes when you're heavy like that, especially when it's kick and punching, it's gonna it's gonna wire you out more more quicker than a lighter fighter, day. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's when, uh, if you're a big fighter and you can get in a wrestling position. Here's our first takedown. You could see how dangerous a low kick like that is. Immediately the guy takes the mount. That was very, oh, solid, right, right, right on the top of the head. Yeah, I think it's too big, you know, he should save his fist, you know. He'd rather would do that with an elbow than, than, than a punch. Yeah, but he comes from a boxing background, so. Now, Negro needs to turn uh, his position here and take advantage of being in the wrestling position. And maybe he can wear the Russian down. There he's trying to turn him. It looks like it's going to be 4-0 for Ferocia, Dave. <laughs> They got some fighters in that country. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many Russian fighters coming on. Oh, now that's that's, that's, that's a, almost a reverse. Huh? Say, don't hold the fence, don't hold the fence. Well, it's clear this is not a good position for Negro. And he's spent a lot of energy trying to hold on and, and uh, you know, protect himself from being hit. And the Russian's not doing anything except uh, sitting on top and waiting to punch. I think it's stupid to, to throw punches like that when you're in a position, I think it's good to work on the ears and just, you know, to make the ears sore and, and work with your open hand and sometimes just, you know, try to work with your elbow inst instead of, you know, right breaking, breaking your hand. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it, it's clear the elbow is a very solid point, much more solid than, than a fist. Also, in, in close quarters like that, you can really put leverage on, on an elbow punch. But you, uh, you can see the Russian knows about ground fighting. You know, you could see a classical move from the Brazilian to do a reversal, and the Russian, you know, is, 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 is putting his ankles on the back of the back of the ham, hamstrings of his opponent. You know, he doesn't want to be thrown over. He doesn't want to be in that position. So he knows about ground fighting, Dave. Yeah, he's a he's a more compact fighter, and. Um, I think it's a little bit harder for these uh, taller fighters to uh, make some of the moves 
uh, if, if a compact fighter can have a good stance, hold, hold himself in a good stance, as we see the Russian is doing. Who do you think he should turn himself quick and then you know, like be on his belly and try to get up? Well, at, th uh, at this point, I think he needs to do anything he can to get out of this position. I know, but it's like rule. You never give your back to an opponent, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw what happened the last, in the last fight when uh, the Brazilian gave the position away on his back. So I, w I wouldn't want to have my back um, to this Russian fighter. Yeah, but is he, is he as killed as Tazarov? That's the question. Oh, 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 he's, he's out. He's almost out. Oh, he takes some heavy blows now to the face. Now he's out. Now he's out. And now we have another new fight again. You and can see it's a, good, it's a good defense against the takedown by the Brazilian. Oh, oh now yeah. the Brazilian is there. Look. Oh, oh, oh. good lefts and rights, and they're, hit, they're hitting. They're hitting. Yeah, Russian's backing up. Those had to hurt. This is a heck of a fight. Good action both by both fighters. They've both taken numerous blows. Oh, no, no. You can see again. He is cut. He is cut. I hope they do not stop this fight by this cut, uh, Dave. Yeah. I think the Brazilian just turned the fight, you know, to his favor, you know. He did what he had to do. and It's his nose, isn't it? Maybe he broke his nose. I think they let the fight continue. They should do. Yeah, they continue, Dave. It's it's clear the Brazilian's not hurt from that. He's just a uh, little nosebleed. Well, it gave both fighters some rest. So, you know, <laughs> on with the fight. You can see the low kick starting hurting. You know, his leg is going to fall out. A back kick by, 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 by the Russian fighter. Yeah, I, I expect uh, Magomed will once again go in and go for the takedown because he clearly took an advantage when he had him down and his skills uh, appear to be superior you know when they when he can get him on the ground so I don't know it just depends you know how to take down how to take down follows up on the ground you know who's taking the mount position I, I don't think you know demonia demonia negro is, is a bad ground fighter oh good solid right hand punch and, and landed on the face of Mahmoud he's a good striker the Brazilian Oh, look, look, I think he's, he's getting tired as well, uh, Dave. I do too. Oh, but will that cut, even, even when Demonia is going to win the fight, will that cut, you know, won't stop Maxim Tarasov from winning? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I thought it was a, uh, did you see, is it a cut or is it a nosebleed? And he tapped off. He tapped off. Look, he tapped off. Well, he defended Brazil, that's for sure. I, I'm not sure what happened. Did you see what happened? Did he have him in a chokehold? I think it was a guillotine choke, but I don't. I, I couldn't see it. You know. Funny, funny that that it was good that the doctor just didn't stop this fight. I mean, the guy, you know, he was, you could see he was starting to reverse with the fight. Yeah, and it's definitely uh, it's to the appreciation, yeah, and to the appreciation of the crowd. I mean, they, they'd like to see a Brazilian go on as well. I think it makes the tournament more interesting as well, though. You know, I if you got too. four Russians in the finals, <laughs> it would, wouldn't be. Negro better save his uh, energy for the next bout because he's, I think he's going to need it. Yeah, well, he's up to Tarasov, a specialist in ground fighting. So, on the other hand, you know, he's a good kick and puncher. He proved himself. Yeah, it'll be a contrast in styles, and uh, it'll be good to see which style can uh, prevail. Demônio, demônio. Bela luta, que batalha, hein? Eu queria que você analisasse essa luta rapidamente. 
comigo é assim, velho. Fiz o meu lugar porque quis, eu tava em casa, só fiz treinar com o meu, com o professor Boca e meus professores aqui, que é o José Hilde. E aí quem manda, eu vou mostrar hoje, quem manda sou eu. Se eu tirar em segundo lugar, velho, pra mim não é luta, pra mim é luta, mas eu sou qualquer um pro inferno e o sub, e o sub espere. Aí, que vem os russos. Que vem o russo. Tô aqui pra lutar e, me, e pra mim acabar aí dentro. E outros são três, hein, Lucas? Well, he's happy, and I think he's determined to win the next fight. Well, there's the two Russians are coming up. I think we get Mikael against, you know, against Kaukas. Semi-finals. Are you up for a day? Uh, yeah, I think I can handle another fight. What do you think? The Russians are warmed up? Yeah, I think they've, uh, I think the Siberian ice has melted off uh, most of these Russian fighters this evening. That uh, training must pay off, boss. I'm with the president of the World Valley to the Federation, Frederico Lapenda, who will give a prize to the Russian president of the Motion Pictures in Russia. And he is the most active martial artist in the continent of Asia. Frederico. Alexander Shakov. Every year, we give a, a sign of appreciation to a martial artist in a different continent. Last year, we had the pleasure of giving a prize to Don the Dragon Wilson. This year, it was a great pleasure that in behalf of the World Valley Tudo Championship and Real Sports Corporation, we present you with the present of the most active martial artist of the decade. Thank you for your collaboration. Nice. Thank you. Um, very pleasure for your attention for me. Thank you. So Alexander Ichakov, he's a Russian movie star. He played in about a hundred movies in Russia. So he's a, he's a, he's a very big uh, movie hero in uh, in Russia. You ever heard of him, Alexander Inchekov? No, I have to take your word on that. I haven't seen too many Russian films lately. You didn't? No, I'll, well, I'll try to brush up on my Russian. You should, you should. It's very interesting. Now some of them are, it's, it's could, be, could be interesting to see uh, how the, the Russian movie industry is. Uh, because we don't realize, yeah, we're getting into the Kawakas Michael uh, fight, it's up to the half finals, semi finals. But uh, it's, it's interesting to see how the, how the movie industry in Russia is developing, you know. I mean, the, the video industry, it, it, it all starts, you know, uh, pe people don't have too much money, but it's, it's there, the entertainment sector. Here you can see Mikael again. You can see he had some heavy blows on the nose in his first fight. And again, he wears little gloves. He is he's a, he's a guy. I mean, look at how he how he enters the uh, how he enters this cage. He's like, well, I'm 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 up for the next fight. You know, it's not it's not like he comes in. And, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna fight this this guy. You know. Yeah, I think he, he's an experienced fighter and. He's up there and he's doing his trade, so. Well, there's Kaukas. They never met before, they never fought before, so. It's going to be interesting. He's a real kick and puncher, this Kaukas guy, so. I, I don't know. I think Mikael goes, wants to go to the ground straight away. Well, who would you bet your money on, Dave? I don't know. I think I'd probably go for uh, Mikel with uh, all the experience he has. And uh, I think experience is a very important part of this. But, you know, anything can happen in a fight. You see, he goes for the takedown straight away. This guy's yeah. a master man in takedown. So quick. Look. Taking a side mount. Ah, Kaukas comes up. He's, just, he's strong. He's phys physical, very strong. You could see that. Good oh, knee, good, good knee by Kaukas. That's some skills in his rushes, huh, Dave? Oh, absolutely. 
traffic. What is, what is happening? I mean, the referee's, referee's interfering. What is happening? Oh, he doesn't have a mouthpiece. He doesn't have a mouthpiece. Look. Oh, did it must have fell out, or I guess we'll get a new mouthpiece here. Yeah, but it's this is bad, man, because they just were in a position where you know where where Mikael closed the distance and, and, and I was trying to get the takedown. And I think it's better now that they, now that they continue the fight. There's no mouthpiece. Or maybe the guy doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> or maybe he won't have any teeth in, in just a minute. That's bad. You know, I have a sports show. It's called Nickel to Shogu Sports in, in Holland and Netherlands. And I sell mouthpieces and I, I, I should advise the guy to, to buy a mouthpiece. Well, maybe you should run up in the ring and, and give him one. No, I make my living by selling mouthpiece, you know, I don't want to give them away, Dave. You can see Mikael is just waiting for the right moment to close the distance and make the takedown. He wants to be on the ground. Yeah, that, that's for sure. We had a lot of stand-up fights tonight already, uh, Dave. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen more action on the, on, on, on the mat. Here we go. Did you saw how quick, oh. one slight mistake, one, he didn't, he didn't pay attention, right he was there, Mikael, and straight away he's in the mount, he started to get the mount position. Unbelievable. And there he is. I think we're gonna get Mikael against Tassarov in the finals. Yeah. You see, he, he hits with the open hand. And that's just to create this type of position. Right. He's experienced. We can see Mikael. He fought 33 minutes with fourth chance in Israel and lost on a point decision. He's the only person to do that. But I, but I am surprised that uh, we haven't really seen anyone throwing elbows this evening. In the beginning, the first fight, we had some nasty elbows. I think it's also sometimes difficult because you you give away a good position but again you know i don't know why this this would be an ideal situation to throw an elbow but maybe it's also a problem to to that you know your balance is not good when you give an elbow it's better to to stay stay in this type of position dave okay. well you're asking the wrong person i think you need to ask uh, michael <laughs> Oh, and he's got the turn on him. And oh, he's quite up. amazing the guy. What is he? Is it an arm lock? What does he have? He's got a leg lock. No, it's an arm lock. He's trying to do an arm bar. Look. Oh yeah. What I'm, is I'm he doing? Yeah, it's an arm. It's an arm bar. Yeah, it was an arm bar. I, I'm really surprised that. Uh, Mikel uh, allowed him to do it. I'm surprised to. Uh, well, actually, I'm more surprised than. The, Maybe Kaukas is just, you know, it's just a fighter who we, who we underestimated. Yeah, I think so. And now we see the classical type of fighting. Somebody's lying on his back, only wants to fight on the ground, and the other one's a stand up fighter. <laughs> This is dangerous because you know we saw we saw Renzo Gracie, you know, kicking Oleg Taktarov out on the same position at the Reality Super Fighting Night. So it's it's very dangerous of uh, of doing this type of uh, doing this type of thing. And he takes them out. He's head he's headbutting Mikael. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think they took both take a little bit of rest, Dave. Here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This has gone quite a, you know, quite a distance. So they both must be tired in the heat. That's for both the second fight. Yeah, that, yeah, that too. 
And Mikkel knows what it is from fighting on his back. <laughs> Maybe Mikkel uh, underestimated his opponent, Kakos. But I'm surprised, you know. I never, uh, I didn't. He, he, he shows some skills already in this fight. He, he did reversals, he's headbutting, he takes mount positions. Yeah, it, it's obvious. Uh, Kakaz is a very determined fighter. And uh, if Don't forget that, that, that they also go for the money, of course, Dave. I mean, there's a big main prize, a main purse for a Russian to win that type of money is they, they become half a millionaire in Russia. Yeah, that's, that would give, uh, I think, most people determination. Why is he stopping the fight, Dave? I don't know, he didn't call it, did he? No. I think his pants are good, but it's good. Maybe he just wanted him uh, to mix it up a little bit more. No, oh, man, I, mean, I think it's like a new type of rule. It's just becoming a too, you know, steady fight on the ground. Both fighters are in a type of defending position. They, they let them start it up again in standing position. Yeah, I think that's good for the crowd because uh, people pay their money and they want to see an exciting fight. So yeah, I think it's good for everybody, you know, people who watch television or a videotape, you know, I mean, you don't want to see a fight go 30 minutes, people just holding each other. Right? They should be in action. Right? They, should, they should be showing and willing to, to fight. I think they're both kind of catching a little breath right now. Well, it's the second fight, you know, and I, if you could see Mikael, the first fight, he took some heavy blows, you know, he had this, this big Brazilian sitting on top of him in the mount position, so and he was on his back. And again, you know, he, he, he has been in a couple of times in that position, and with, you know, like 40, it's getting more like 40 degrees in here, Celsius, it's, it's, it's warm, it's hot, you know, it's, it takes stamina and conditioning to continue a fight and, and, and to be able to show an aggressive type of fighting. Yeah, you just saw him taking several really deep breaths, and anytime you see something like that, you know the fighter's very tired. Here he did it again. But he had a tougher first fight, so. Now, now, now he's saying to both of the fighters, you know, start, start getting ready to fight, you know, you should both make more efforts and, and doing the fight but it's easy for the referee to say right. Well, it looks like Mikel's just a little tired to, uh, He's trying make, to, right a, hook. Yeah, but to, to make much of a move. I think Kakaz would like to uh, counter right now. I mean, he, he doesn't look as tired. You see, again, it's Mikel who's going for a takedown. Oh. That's a strange position, uh, Dave. If it was a female, they should call it a doggy style. <laughs> well, I think if, if uh, they were in this position on the streets of Brazil, I could probably get arrested for that. I don't know about Brazil, uh, maybe other countries. Oh, what a takedown. What a great takedown by Mikael. You could see he's closing like a snake, his, his, his legs on the inner, inner, inner body of, of, cow, of Kaukas. Ah, and he turns him again. It's, it's, it's an amazing fight, uh, Dave. Yeah, I think Kaukas just uh, has more in his gas tank. I think he's physical stronger. Don't you think so? He's the better physics of the guy? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think if we waive the first fight, you know, advantage, because he, he clearly um, didn't have to expend as much energy in that first fight. Yeah, 
Yeah, but we, we shouldn't throw off Mikael, you know. He's still, he's, he, he is and stays a surprise. Yeah, and this fight's still going on, so, you know. Neither uh, fighter has clearly taken any advantage in this fight, really, so. Maybe, maybe as time goes on, Kakas will uh, tire and uh, it'll be a little bit more balanced. And uh, Mikhail will take ad advantage with uh, all of his skills and experience. Mm -hmm. Kakas doing a headbutt. Well, this is definitely definitely not what we were expecting. Yeah, but you can see Mikael still doesn't give up. He just wants to. And yeah, and you don't know. I mean, you, you saw them both doing reversals and, and taking the mount position again. And you see, uh, Kakaz keeps that forearm up around the throat of Mikel. And, and it's not necessarily a choke. And again, they, they started in a standing position. It's good from the referee, you know. I mean, if this, this, if both of the fighters are not showing an effort to fight, you know, they should just stop the fight and restart it. Well, this is definitely a fight of attrition. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's just going to come down to who, who's got the most gas in their tank. Many fights in the world do, do have the same uh, do have the same symptoms. Uh, they, it's good boxing. Now he's taking a rest. He goes like, let me rest. If you think it's the heat? Well, I think it's the heat and, and uh, just the numerous blows and, and all the wrestling. All the all of those holes and, and moves on the ground really um, take a lot of energy out of out of a fighter. Mikael is tired. Oh, look, he puts, the, he puts his hands on the hips. And he shows it. Yeah, we well, can see his, he's taking very deep breaths. And he's, he's or backing or, or is he faking it? What uh, do you I think? Don't, I don't think he's faking it. No, but I mean, there's a rule in fighting. You, know, you never show your opponent your tyrant. And he yeah. is just, you know, he's trying to do the opposite. step in again if uh, they keep going like this because they, they really need to mix it up. There he is. Okay. What, what would you say in this type of thing, you know, would you disqualify it if they just you stop the fight? You stop the fight. Look, the Russian says, what, what are you doing? Why do you stop the fight? Because you should fight. Right. Okay, now let him fight. <laughs> Give him one more chance. So what does that do for the uh, bracket? I don't, I don't know what you, you know, if, if you should advance somebody now to, to let somebody go to the Look finals, yes or no, I don't know. Os juízes está desclassificando os dois. I think that's what they're discussing now. Yeah, but the referee's right, you know, I mean, there should be a fight, and if they don't want to fight, you just, you know, disqualify them both, I think. Well, if they're both disqualified, then I guess that uh, will leave uh, Tarasov and uh, Negro for the final. Then we should have a Brazilian against a Russian mm -hmm. in the final. We got to admire the guys, man. I mean, you know, of course, as an audience, we want to see a good fight, but this this is a long fight. They took some blows. They, they, they this is the second bare knuckle fight on the evening, and you know both fighters, of course, want to give their best. But it's like you know, it's it's a big thing. Well, they're still in a cage. Um, you know, maybe.
maybe he's just going to let him rest for a minute and say, okay, boys, let's finish this off. Well, maybe Federico is just, oh, no, no, now, the, now it's open. I think maybe Federico just wanted, wanted to close the gate and not let nobody came out. Well, can they just lock that door? I thought that's the way it works. Well, they should lock the door. You know, we've seen it with the case fight number two and the tournament number two in, in, in Amman Holland that, you know, a photographer made a picture and forgot to close the gate. And, of course, at that moment, like one minute later, they both fell to that position and the door opens and they're out of the cage. And that's, that's no problem for the fighters, but it is for the crowd. I mean, uh, how would you like a 220-pound man? Stop the fight. Well, who's the closing then? I'm surprised, you know. I, I, who, what do you George, think? George, what do you think of that result? I don't know what's happened because this is a real fight. This is a real fight, I think. The, the, uh, the fighter will fight in far. You know, the problem was they're just not going at each other. You know, it was a very slow fight. But what do you think of the decision of the ref? Be because uh, uh, this is uh, Avitisian style. Avitisian uh, fight uh, every time in this uh, style. Uh, he, he knew that uh, time limit 30 minutes. It's okay. He's, uh, he, this is uh, his style. Uh, this is normal, I think. The fight, real fight. I, I don't know what's happening. Thank you. He doesn't know what happened. He's very frustrated. And we also have a very frustrated Mikael. Well, Demonio Negro against Maxim Tassarov. Tarasov, that's the next fight. It's kind of interesting, you know, that uh, George Koblianski, the trainer manager, uh, said that uh, Mikael has this type of, you know, he's, he, that's his style of fighting. He, he, you know, he stands there, puts the hands in the hips, and just, you know, maybe shows that he's like tired. That's what I told you, you know, sometimes he's. And he's right. I mean, there's a 30-minute time limit, so uh, I kind of agree with him. I mean, let it go the 30 minutes and see if there's a, a winner. And if they if, if they Lucas. can't determine a winner in, winner in 30 minutes, Parece then disqualify the negro both vai lutar. But, uh, you know, the, the, the rule, uh, the limit is the 30 minutes. So, you know, I know the action was slow and, the, and no one likes to watch uh, two fighters just stumbling around the ring, but... I don't think we have this problem with this fight. We see Tarasov just entering, and now, of course, Demonio Negro, who, who smells victory, who had a victory in the first fight, and I think he's cut, you know, maybe stitched, or uh, they will probably push him through on it. And now he, he wants to fight, and he wants to be in the finals. I mean, he's the only Brazilian who can can do this right now. Yeah, this, this should be very interesting. Two very different styles and two uh, very different physiques. And you can see, man, he is running to the cage. He is going in there. He is, wants to show the Brazilian audience, I'm here for the Brazilians. I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to fight this Tarasov. And don't forget about the prize money. And, and that's a lot of money in Brazil, too. I mean, we were talking about how much money that was in Russia. But uh, we carry him a long ways in Brazil, too. So. You can see he's a little bit burnt in the face. Tarasov, he's probably been on the beach the first time in his life. <laughs> the guy gets the sun tan. He wants to go. He is ready for it, Dave. Yeah, Don't you think so? Oh, absolutely. Tarasov just looks very cool and collected. Tarasov is uh, four inches taller. He's six four. Um, Negro is six foot. But Negro uh, has several pounds on Tarasov. You can see it, especially in the upper chest and arms. Well, Tarasov practiced judo, sambo, but he's also a good kick and puncher. I mean, he, he knows he knows how to throw a kick or a punch. Well, I think he, he's really going to have to win this fight on, on uh, his technique and skills. Um, 
he's, he's really in there against a big bruiser who really wants his fight, so. Yeah, but the, the, I think, uh, I think, you know, Demonio is one, he knows, you know. Tarasov is a good ground fighter, he's a skilled fighter, I did many Knowles Bear fights, I think it's number 40 now for Tarasov. He won the cage fight tournament number 4. You know, he's, he's won, he knows he, he, there's a skilled opponent uh, against him. And this is this is gonna wear out the Brazilian because the Russian is, is you know is faking an attack. You know he, there's tension on on the Brazilian all the time. You see that he's faking the attack. You know it's, it, it takes a lot of conditioning by moving around and being prepared all the time. When it you know it takes the middle of middle of the case, Tarasov. I'm surprised, you know, I thought, you know, in the first fight, he, look, oh, that, that is the thing what I was waiting for, this type of punches, you know, the guy was throwing in punches, oh, wow. oh, wow, a good counter with a right punch from Tarasov. Here we can see he's not only a judo player, you know, he, he can throw, oh, oh with a right punch, oh, and he's down, oh, he, he's out, he is so called out, amazing, you know, the guy is a <laughs> judo specialist and he wins by punching. Well, there goes the hope for Brazil, Dave. Yep. Yeah, that was a very cool and collected Tarasov. He's a very happy man. It's the second tournament he's winning. Uh, yeah, he's going to walk away with a nice purse. And uh, maybe he can take his holidays uh, in Brazil after this. Well, there's, there's one guy. It's called Edson Carvalho. Mestre da Morte, master of the death technique. And he's fighting this guy. Well, what do we say about this guy, uh, Dave? Igor Fofchalcin. It's called Ice Cold. 32 fights, one controversial defeat. And this is number 33. And he's on a mission. Yeah, and we've, we've seen how well the Russians have done down here in this warm climate. Yeah, but the thing is, Cavallo, you know, he sent Walid Ismail to the intensive care to one of the most bloodiest street fights on the streets of Rio de Janeiro. And Walid Ismail is a big name. Igor is so powerful. Oh, look at him punching and kicking. This is terrible. Look. I don't see this fight going too long. Oh, with a right punch. Oh, he, he hit him with that right punch. Yeah. Very clever, though. You saw Igor. Come on, come on, come on. Stand up again. He knows that is his game. He's a kickboxer. He wants to kick and punch. If there's no defense, he is laughing. He is not intimidated at all with Master and Amorta. He's just, you know, he is taking a beating, uh, Dave. Well, he's a, he's a clear strength advantage, and he's very fast. Oh my God! Look, I'm landing these right punches. It's terrible. Look, he's he is he's he's rocked. This ego, this ego guy is a guy to watch, huh? Yeah, he he looks unstoppable. He's, he's really good. Look at that move, you know, how, how he invaded that punch. No, I'm not going to play that game. Look, you guys said, I'm not going <laughs> to go to the ground with you. Come on, get up. <laughs> Mestre da Morte is on his back, Dave. Well, I don't blame him. I think I'd be on my back, too. 
takes courage to stand up again against a guy like Igor. Elbow, I mean, yeah. how complete is the guy? You know, oh, he's incredible. Very well trained. I mean, he's, he's got his skills down. Yeah, he punches the guy to the head. He shows him several <laughs> serious damage. Oh, he is bleeding. Yeah, I think they continue to fight this below the eye. Of course, I don't know if uh, Carver Hall would like it to continue. Or, I'm sorry, Carvalho. Does he have a cut on his nose? Yeah, well? I mean, he has a big name. I mean, he cannot. This is this is very nasty for him to lose to lose in such a short period of time against this Russian fighter. For him, it's a disgrace in Brazil today. I'll bet you they let the fight continue. Yeah. Well, the, he's got time left. He could uh, do something. I'm not sure why <laughs> against this big uh, brawling Russian. Well, this is the result of a man on a mission, Dave. Look at the face of the Brazilian. He fought a couple. He fought like two minutes with Fofchanchin, and this is the result. <laughs> and the blood we see on Fofchanchin's face is from Cavallo. It's, it's yeah. not from him, uh, Dave. Here we go. Oh, oh look at that right, right hand. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is taking some. Oh, and again, what Another a punch, but Jesus Christ. And he stands up again, amazing. Oh, this uh -huh. is the third time he goes, he goes down. Yeah, well, you can count. He, he, what a, he has courage, man. No, You've got to give him to that. No, he should stay down. Yeah, I think he's more <laughs> healthy for his courage. For, look at, and they're going to continue the fight, I'm telling you. That was three straight full blows on the face. Oh, this is it, man. They should stop the fight. This is... this. They should... He is... Oh, look at this. Yeah. He's gone. No, he, they should stop the fight. This is, you know, the guy is just so much fun with me. Yeah. And you have to remember, I mean, these guys don't have boxing gloves on. I mean, that's bare fist. Yeah, I mean, that, those are solid blows. So we had a very, very uh, solid performance this evening by, you know, really all the Russians. And uh, I think it's a bit disappoint, uh, disappointing for the Brazilians. But what it says, it says time for the truth. That's a nasty cut the guy has. Well, I think he's lucky if he just escapes the ring with uh, a few cuts. He took some courage though. I mean, the guy, you know, he, he, you know, he doesn't take a punch and then lays down and then, you know, he, he wanted to prove himself. Yeah. It looks like he's pretty clear again. I mean, he, Look at this guy, man. Clear. He doesn't have a scratch. He's an animal. <laughs> he doesn't have a scratch. He knew about Chelsea. Thank you. World Valatudo Super Fight Champion again, Igor Provchanchin. Unbelievable. Fight number 33. This is so amazing, this guy. He fought last time in Pride, you know. Beat Gary Goodrich, who, who gave Paco, who has a very big hard time. And he is continuing. It's amazing, and it's it's like it's like he's growing as well. He's 105 kilo pure solid muscle. 
Igor of Chelsea. Né? Unbelievable. You could hear the crowd yelling as well, Igor. I mean, he's, he's getting popular in Brazil, uh, Dave. Yeah, I mean, these fights, uh, the fans come to see a good fight. And uh, it was obvious that the Brazilians didn't do you know, too well this evening. But, you know, the, the crowd wants to see action. And they got plenty of action out of these Russians this evening. Well, you won the World Fellow Tudor Championships number five. You won a super fight in six. You won a super fight in seven. You, you, he won the absolute fighting championships in, 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 in Russia. I mean, he's unstoppable. He's a happy man too. And he had my mouth gum. <laughs> Maybe that was the you know, deciding factor was your mouthpiece. Yeah, but I sponsored the mouthpiece. This, this one I gave away. Well, see you all next time. I hope you enjoyed the tape. Thanks, boss.